Try Gurudev. Om Jnana Timirandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chakshorn Minitanjana Tasmai Shri Vena Maha Vanchakalpa Dhruvya Shchak Vipa Sindhu Bhyeva Chapati Tanam Pavane Bhya Vaishnave Bhya Namo Namaha Namo Mahavadanyaya Krishna Prima Pradayate Krishnaya Krishna Chaitanya Namne Gauda Tese Namaha What is that line? Vaishnaveda Gunagan It's very... What is that line? Um, let me find it. I'm just thinking of this. Today is the divine appearance of Srinivasa Charja. And it is so purifying and inspiring for us to hear the qualities of the, of the Vaishnavas. And I'm just remembering this line. Gurudev light to this line. Vaishnaveda Gunagan, this to hear the glories of the Vaishnavas. Here it is. Vaishnaveda Gunagan, Kodi Le Ji Veda Tnan, Shuniyachi Sadhu Mukhe. Krishna Bhakti Samudoy Janama Safalahoy E Bhava Sagada Tode Sukhe. I have heard from the great saints and gurus that upon hearing the qualities of the Vaishnava saints, the conditioned souls attain liberation. And beyond this, devotion to Krishna develops, makes the soul's birth perfect, and the soul crosses this material ocean happily with ease. So just by hearing the qualities of the Vaishnavas, you know, so much can be attained. And the, you know, the, the history of Srinivasa Charja, and actually the word history is not so appropriate because their pastimes are eternal, you know, they are, they are living. But the, you know, the, the life of Srinivasa Charja, his pastimes are very, very inspiring to hear. He, from a very young age, he, he took up a life of exclusive devotion. And, you know, he's an important acharya in the line of, of Mahaprabhu. I believe he originally appeared in, in Bangladesh, what is now Bangladesh, what was East Bengal at the time. And he was young, maybe around 15 years old, when he left home to, to, you know, join. He had heard about Mahaprabhu and he wanted to stay with Mahaprabhu in Puri. And so he left and on, on the way to Puri, he stopped in Nabadweep, the place of Mahaprabhu's birth, of course, and to do some pilgrimage there. And while he was there, he actually met with Vishnu Priya Devi and he received the special mercy of Vishnu Priya. And as, as we know, Vishnu Priya, she, after Mahaprabhu left to take sannyas, she lived a very austere and very secluded life. Um, but Srinivas, you know, he was a young, young boy um, and, you know, innocent boy. And so she, she actually, you know, spoke to him she brought him to her home and she fed him. Um, so he received those special blessings. And then from there he continued to Puri where he was hoping to meet with Mahaprabhu. However, he, when he arrived, he heard that Mahaprabhu had just left the world. So of course he was, he was devastated. Um, but he, he had also had a, had a dream in which Mahaprabhu had instructed him to study Bhagavatam from Garadhar Pandit. And so he approached Garadhar. And Garadhar told him, Oh, you know, I've also I also received this instruction from my Lord that I must, you know, teach you Bhagavatam. However, I have no copy of Bhagavatam. <laughs> because as you know, we were discussing the other day, 
Srila Sridhar describes in his famous verse how as Mahaprabhu is hearing Bhagavatam, Gadadhar Pandit is reading Bhagavatam to Mahaprabhu, and in the course of doing that, tears are streaming from his lotus eyes like flower offerings onto the pages of Srimad Bhagavatam. And in and as his tears were falling onto the pages, so his tears are washing away <laughs> the letters of, of Bhagavatam. Nilam bodhita te sadaswa. So anayanashu payanai pujayan. Yes, that's the line. You're doing puja to Bhagavatam with his with his tears. So Garadhar Pandit said, No, I'm I'm sorry, I have no copy. <laughs> the copy I have has been has been the letters have all been washed away. So you please go and obtain another copy. And in those days that was that was, you know, like a it was it was not a light matter, you know, to, to have a copy of something that would be like a that would be a, a serious thing, you know, to have something copied out. We take these things very lightly nowadays, you know, with all of our, you know, technology. But in those days that was like quite a feat, you know, to have a book copied out. So Gradhar Pandit told told him, I'm sorry, I have no copy, you'll have to have it get a new copy made. And so Srinivasa Charji had to travel back to Bengal to obtain a, a new copy of Bhagavatam. And by the time he came back, Gadadhar Pandit had also left the world. Gadadhar could not stay so long after Mahaprabhu had left. So he was already gone. And again, Srinivas, you know, he was, he was devastated. And at some point, he, at this time, he also joined forces with, with uh, Narutam and Shamananda. And I believe they traveled together to Vrindavan. And that their, their journey was also very, uh, you know, was also very heartbreaking because as they were, they went, traveled to Vrindavan thinking, oh, we've heard about the Goswamis of Vrindavan, we've heard about Rup and Sanatan and Jiva Goswami, and we can take shelter of them. And particularly Rup and Sanatan, they were the, they were the leaders of that group, the head of the Gaudiya Vaishnav group. So they were particularly hoping to meet them. But along the way, they heard that, oh, Sanatana Goswami has left the world, you know. And so again, you know, Srinivas, he was, he was devastated. And then, but so, so, so Srinivas thought, well, at least Rup, Sri Rupa will be there, you know, Rupa Goswami will be there. But then as they reached, just as they reached Vrindavan, I believe it was in Mathura that they heard the news about Sanatana Goswami. And then when they reached Vrindavan, they came out, they, as they arrived outside the Radha Damodar temple where Rupa Goswami was staying. In his last days, he, you know, in his, in his, his, you know, when he was showing some, you know, weakness in his last days, then Jiva Goswami cared, was caring for him at his temple, the Radha Damodar temple, where our, you know, which is right next to our, our temple. And so just as he reached outside of the Radha Damodar temple, the arati was going on and, and there was a huge crowd and everyone was chanting in this very intense, intense, you know, mood. And Srinivas, you know, he's, you know, inquiring, you know, what is, what has happened? And then he hears that, that, Rupa has just left the world. And he, this was too much, you know, he, he fainted. He could not tolerate this, you know, this pain to be so close and so far, to just miss these great Vaishnavas. And, and Shula Shudamarshi, he described how when he, 
When he woke up, he found that he was in the lap of Jiva Goswami. <laughs> My goodness, <laughs> what grace, you know, to wake up on the lap of Jiva Goswami. <laughs> Jiva Goswami personally came to, to attend to him. And so the, the three of them, Srinivas and Shamananda, Narutam, they all stayed in Vrindavan for some time, must have been a few years. And they all took initiation there. Do you remember who Srinivas took initiation from? Srinivas. Uh, no. Narutam took from Lokanath. Shamananda from Hridaya Chaitanya. Shamananda from Hridaya. Shamananda from Hridaya Chaitanya. Yeah, and Srinivas Acharya from. Uh, Could it have been Bhugarbha Goswami? I don't remember. But anyhow, they all took initiation from different Vaishnavas, but they studied together Jiva under Jiva Goswami. And Jiva Go, Shila Jiva Goswami also gave each of them their titles. So Srinivas Acharya, Narutam Thakur, and Shamananda Prabhu. And so they stayed for some time, and then... At a certain point, Jiva Goswami, by the request of the Vaishnavas in Bengal, you know, he, he instructed them to carry some of the writings of the Goswamis back to Vrindavan. Because there was so much literature that the Goswamis had, had, uh, had, had you know, prepared, had written. But the, the Vaishnavas in Bengal, they had no access to that. And so they were eager to, to hear that. You know, all the writings of Rup and Sanatan. And I expect Chaitanya Charitamrita was also in that, in that, you know, mix. So they were given this very special, important task to carry these books to, to Bengal. They had a bullock cart filled with piles of books. And then there's that, that famous incident when the, the Raj of Vishnupur, you know, Raj Bir Hambir, he stole their books just when they reached the, the border of Bengal. They spent the night there. And when they woke in the morning, all their books were gone. <laughs> And that that king, as as we're told, he he was a, he he you know he was a something of a dacoit, as they say in in Bengal. You know, he had some underground black market business, and he he would he had an astrologer who would calculate, you know, when and where there was something of value that could be stolen, to add to his his riches. And so the king's astrologer had calculated that at this place, at this time, this, you know, this casket of jewels, <laughs> it, it will be, it will, you know, enter your territory, it will be available. And, and so the king, in the middle of the night, he sent some of his, his, his thieves, and they took those trunks of books and of course, when the, when the king opened it, he saw these are these are actually these are not jewels; these are books. <laughs> but he also had some piety, you know. And and he he had, he checked his calculations again and again. It came out as as you know these are indicating these are jewels. And so he could understand that that these are not these are not ordinary books. You know, these are these are jewels in the form of books. And so he was doing some puja offering incense to those books every day. And meanwhile, Srinivas, Narutam, Shamananda, you know, they woke up and they were devastated to find that 
these precious books had disappeared. And, and Srinivasacharya, he was the leader of the group, he was a little elder. And so they, they spent some time searching and then Srinivas ordered the other two, you continue, you know, we cannot, we cannot stop our preaching mission. And so they, they both went on in, into Bengal and they began their preaching. And Srinivas decided to stay there in Vishnupur until he could, he could find those books. And he, you know, we hear he, he, he gave all his energy, you know, he became sick, you know, he completely neglected himself, not eating or sleeping properly in his endeavor to try to regain the lost books. And then at one time he had some friends who invited him to the king's palace. There was going to be a, a reading of Srimad Bhagavatam. And, and so he thought, okay, well, <laughs> nothing to lose. So he went and he sat quietly there. But the man who was seated on the Vyasa son, who was giving the, the explanation, he was giving some bogus explanation, some some impersonal explanation. And Srinivas, of course, you know, he's a very humble Vaishnav and he doesn't want to, to say anything, but finally he can't tolerate this. You know. He can't tolerate that Srimad Bhagavatam will be misrepresented in such a way. And so, so eventually he, he just couldn't stand it anymore. And he, he stood up and he made some, some objection and 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 they everyone could see, you know, Srinivas, he he looked like a real sadhu. You know, they could see his effulgence, you know, his simplicity of nature and dress, and they could recognize and, and so the king invited him. You know, oh, can you give some better explanation? And oh, and I forgot to mention very important point that Srila Sridharmarj makes that Srinivasacharya, what's very interesting is that, you know, he, he had received that blessing from Mahaprabhu, which Gadadhar had, had, had acknowledged um, that, that, you know, Gadadhar would teach Srinivas Bhagavatam. You know, this was, this was the, the will of Mahaprabhu and Gadadhar Pandit that that, that Srinivas would be instructed in Bhagavatam by Gadadhar. However, physically that never took place, you know, because of the circumstances. But simply because of the fact that that will was behind him, because he had Gadadhar's good will and blessings upon him to understand Bhagavatam, then Srinivas, he became, you know, a very great, um, you know, lecturer, on Srimad Bhagavatam. Srila Siddhamar said, you know, when he went later, when he went to open Bhagavatam, all of the meaning, meanings, they came rushing to him, you know, because he had that, that blessing upon him. So, so Srila Siddhamar said, you know, revelation, it is, the, it is, the, it is dependent upon the will of, of the Vaishnav, Guru and Vaishnav. It is a descending process. And so Srinivas, he became renowned as this extraordinary reciter of Srimad Bhagavatam. He would give the most beautiful explanations. So, so he was invited in this grand assembly to, to take the... And really, I, I find it quite impressive. It shows how pious that king was, you know, how devotionally minded that... You know, he already had somebody there, you know, and then he dismisses him. <laughs> And he has Srinivas come up and speak, Be simply because he's recognizing in Srinivas, oh, you know, he is an authentic sadhu. You know? So he has, he has Srinivas, you know, he's, despite some bad nature, he's the king, he's sincere. He has some sincerity and goodness in him. So the king invited him up to sit in the Vyasa Sam. <coughs> And, and so Srinivas, he, he began with his explanation. And everyone was captivated. And I, I read one description. It was in one of the Back to Godhead magazines, actually. There was some, 
it was some eyewitness account, some historical accounts, someone, someone who'd been present or someone of that time. Because there are so many, you know, we, we've been given Chaitanya Charitamrita and Chaitanya Bhagavad, especially by our gurus, but there are many accounts that were, that were written at the time of Mahaprabhu and then also in the, in the generation after. But anyhow, and there was one description of this, this event which said that, that the explanation of Srinivasacharya was so beautiful and so charming that the walls were melting. <laughs> I don't know if it literally means that the walls are melting <laughs> or it's simply an expression to try to convey how extraordinarily wonderful it was. You know. But everyone was, was completely captivated by his explanation. And, and, after, and afterwards, the king approached Srinivas and offered himself to him. You know, I can see you are such a great Vaishnava. You know, what can I do for you? And the Srinivas said, well, you know, actually, <laughs> there is something. You know, I've lost these books. You know, I brought these books from, from Vrindavan. And as soon as I got here, they were stolen. And then the king, he immediately confessed and he... He brought Srinivas to these trunks that he had. And, and Srinivas saw how nicely they'd been taken care of and the king was worshipping them every day. And, and so the king, he, he gave those, those books to Srinivas. And then the king took initiation from Srinivas and, and the whole district became Vaishnav. They, they, it, it became known as like a, a place of like, you know, very solid Vaishnavas. You know, for generations after the, the rulers, they were very strict. Like, there was one, I don't remember if I heard it from Gurudev or Srila Sridhamarsh, but, but they told one description of how, how it was like a rule, everybody had to chant Japa. And like, like there would be people who'd go around checking that people were chanting their Japa. <laughs> So they, they became, you know, very serious, serious Vaishnavas. <laughs> and I believe Vishnupur was one of the few places that remained independent. Or maybe I'm mixing, I mean, during the, no, maybe I'm mixing things up, during the Muslim rule. So by rule, no. by group, they have to, they start with some, and then maybe they develop something. <laughs> <laughs> like the people were afraid, like they'd, they'd be found out, you know. <laughs> but yeah, they, they became, you know, that region became known, you know, for being very, like, serious about their, you know, Vaishnava practices. And then Srinivas... I don't, I don't know if I've heard so much after that. You know, we hear more about Narutam. Do you remember much after that what happened with Srinivas? Uh, not much, except that he preached in, he preached in Bengal, right? Yes. And also Narutam. Narutam was also kind of in Bangladesh, modern day, and the northeast states, right? Assam. Awesome. Assam, Manipur. Yeah. Manipur. And Shamananda went to Orissa. So I think Trinivasacharya is preaching the all this, what we say, on the West Bengal now. Right. Yes, I think that's right. Yeah. Yeah, we haven't heard so much. And he's also, Srila Gurudev, he would point out. He's also given us this beautiful song, Shad Goshami Ashtakam, glorifying the, the six Goswamis very beautifully. I don't know if we have any other compositions that we, that we chant. I don't know. That might be. I'm sure he's written other things. Was he under the but, direction of Jiva Goswami? Yes, he studied under... Jiva Goswami. 
We can't remember who he took initiation from, but, but he, it might have been Jiva Goswami. One of them, I believe, did take from Jiva Goswami. Right, right, right. Yeah, then it may have been actually Jiva Goswami, but we're not sure. <clears throat> But I've heard, I've heard some accounts that, I mean, it could refer to Shamananda, Shamananda's special initiation, right? Mm. And some say that that came by Jiva Goswami. So I've heard some right. say that Jiva Goswami gave some initiation to Shamananda. Mm. Right, right. So that could be what you're thinking about. Yeah, that could be it. Yeah, I think I, I was thinking of Shamananda. It might have been... You don't think Shamananda took initiation from Jiva Goswami? Shamananda? Srinivas. Shamananda. Yeah, that's what I was saying, because it was that special pastime where he went into ecstasy and he found a bracelet. Right? Yes. And the leader and Radharani ended up coming and asking for the bracelet. Right. And it's touched to his... There's various accounts of the story in various levels of detail, but the race that is pushed onto the forehead. Yes. Uh, by either the Lita Shakti or Rattarani. And it leaves an imprint, like a tila imprint on the right. forehead. Right. And of course that is uh, that is then because it happens while he's at Jiva Goswami's ashram. Hmm. Jiva was like accused, right? Like well, some yeah, blame him. There's some connection. But Jiva gave his endorsement to that. Mm. And so the new initiation was connected, or the new Tilak was connected to Jiva Goswami. And there was right. some controversy. Right. When Vridha uh, Chaitanya came to visit, it was like his disciple had, had done away with the previous Tilak and adopted <laughs> a new style of Tilak. But I remember reading that although the initiation itself was considered a mystical initiation by Srimati Radharani, hmm. it had been kind of ratified, you could say, by Jiva Goswami or right. authenticated on hmm. a more practical level by Jiva Goswami. Right. So perhaps that is being referred to in places as Jiva Goswami giving initiation right. to Shamananda. Right. I remember Srila Gurudev mentioning how he gave it as an example of how we will receive spiritual knowledge through the service, you know, through our service connection. He gave this example of, of Jiva Goswami instructing Shamananda to, to sweep one, one kunda, you know, so like Im implying they had some you know, like intimate relationship, you know, where he was serving under, under Jiva Goswami. But anyhow. There is a book called uh, Prem Vilas, and it talks a lot about, in fact, it goes into a lot of descriptive detail about that, that Vishnu Pura event, the stolen book. Mm. But I think there's some anachronisms in it as well. Um, so I'm not sure if it's kind of totally accepted mm -hmm. as, as authentic. Mm -hmm. like there's some account of when the books were stolen and then, oh, there's, there's various anomalies in it. Mm -hmm. I, I think other parts, one by one Nitin under does. But mm -hmm. there's other, the detailed accounts of Srinivas uh, searching for the books and then as you were describing in the past night and lecturing in the king's court, etc. That is, that is given quite a lot of detail. Uh -huh. I think that's considered as an authentic historical description. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, I think, I think that's, that's all. Yeah. Anything else to add? Anybody? I'd love to sing that song. Okay, yeah, can sing it. Who's going to sing? Good Harper, you want to sing? I can't find it.
Krishna Kirtana Gamanartana Paro Premam Tambo Nidhi Dira Dira Anakya Kriya Kano It's on page 148. Do you want to sing it? Oh, okay. Um, I, I can sing it if you prefer. Jai Shri Gurudev. Krishna Kirtana Gana Nartana Pado Premamritam Bonidhi Thank you. 
Oh, 
Jai Shila Srinivasa Charja Ki Jai Tadi Avir Bhav Mahama Hutsavati Tiki Jai Jai Shila Bhakti Sundar Bhavinda Dev Gosami Marj Ki Jai Shila Bhakti Rakshak Shidhar Dev Gosami Marj Ki Jai Shila Bhakti Nirmala Charja Marj Ki Jai Shishi Ru Garanga Radha Giri Dhari Ki Jai Ananta Koti Vaishnava Vinda Ki Jai Samagata Gaur Bhakta Vinda Ki Jai Shri Buddha Purnima Ki Jai Shri Hari Nam Singh Ki Jai Ki Jai Ki Jai Gaur Premanande Very beautiful song Yes <laughs> Gurudev mentioned Swami Maharaj was always intoxicated with this song. <laughs> yeah, you said it like that. Yeah, Swami. It's definitely one of the well known and famous ones that yes. sings. Yeah. <laughs>